But if you don't have hollowness, filler is not going to help you. I feel so bad. Have you seen the videos of Jennifer Aniston? No. With her, she did this like big bulge under her eyes. Oh no, I haven't seen that. I, and you know, I, and I feel so bad for these celebrities. You know, they they get anything done, and there's God forbid, there's like swelling. Welcome to the More Than a Pretty Face podcast, where we go more than just skin deep to explore the science of beauty so you can look and feel your best at any age. I'm your host, Dr. Azade Shirazi, a board-certified dermatologist, and today I am so, so excited. I have a co-host who's also a dermatologist, my dear friend and colleague, Dr. Mina. She is visiting me all the way from LA. Hello. Hi, I'm so happy to be here. Finally, we get you on the podcast. I'm so excited. We've talked about doing this for so long. So I so know, it's going to be so fun. Between yes. two derms, I love bouncing stuff off of my colleagues and having discussions about whatever it might be, skin conditions or treatments or whatnot. Yeah. So welcome aboard. Thank you. So happy to be here. So. I've known you for a few years, but can you tell the audience what, how you got to where you got and a little background, a little info? So I am from Los Angeles and I grew up in Los Angeles, always kind of been in Southern California for all of my training. Mm -hmm. I went to undergrad at UCLA and then I did medical school at UC Riverside and did residency at Kaiser Los Angeles. And now I'm working as an attending dermatologist and I graduated about two years ago. And I, like you, started posting content during the pandemic, during 2020. Yes, I think I discovered you on yeah. TikTok with all your cute little videos. So social media is really great because it brings people together and we got to meet that way. Uh -huh. um, so basically during that time I was posting, educating, and had so much fun with it. Met a lot of great people through it. And now we're here. I know. We formed a, like a, a friend group, yeah. just, you know, of us doing some trips together, yeah. conferences, and meeting up in real life because we kind of sort of met over COVID. Yeah. And I think the first time I met you was during the American Academy of Dermatology. It has this one big, huge meeting once a year. And I think that's where we first met in yeah. person. So, and I well, really felt like I already knew you. Yeah. We like, had already <laughs> seen each other, interacted with each other on. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, well, I'm so excited. So on the podcast, we have something called beauty and blemish. Mm -hmm. And so we talk about beauty, the best things that are happening in our life and blemish things that you just wish you could take a little concealer and erase. Do you have a beauty and blemish you want to share? So I was going to say beauty is that I came from L.A. to come here and like we finally like planned Aww, it. And I think so that's just such sweet. a beauty that we could like spend time together and do this. Uh -huh. And I don't have a blemish right now. Oh, wow. That's good. That's I mean, good. I do have blemishes on my face. <laughs> I don't have like in my life. Well, I'm, I'm trying to blemishes. stay positive. I'm trying to stay positive. I do have some pimples. Um, what about you? My beauty is that I am going on vacation in a, nice. in a couple of days. And I'm so excited. A couple days. Because, okay. Yes. And so I'm going with my family. And I that always looks so forward to those because we get to be together all the time. Our lives are so crazy. So where are you going? I'm excited. I'm going to go to Austria. And Whoa. my daughter's learning all about World War II. So she wants to go and see all the historic sites. She wants awesome. to go see like eagle's nest and like salt caves and whatnot so very cool. yeah I've, I've never been so I'm, I'm excited to explore that so exciting all right so let's get into it today we are going to be talking all about anti-aging we're going to talk about hyperpigmentation fine lines and wrinkles and you're just going to be sitting in on our conversation just like you and I would be talking at dinner about you know this and that but we're going to make it you know more educational and uh, we Always strive to bring you guys value. So if you find this podcast helpful, please don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe and share it with a friend because sharing is caring. All right. So I thought it would be fun to talk about anti-aging and with summer coming up, we're getting a lot of questions about things like stretch marks. So let's start with hyperpigmentation and sunspots because it is something that we get a lot of questions about because all of us have, you know, some sort of freckle or hyperpigmentation. So well, how do you explain hyperpigmentation to your patients? So hyperpigmentation is super common. And I think most of the time it's from the sun. And we see that very often with our patients. And that's why we're always recommending sunscreen. 
It's basically when there's excess melanin in the skin and that's what leads to the hyperpigmentation. So that can either be from like the melanocytes producing too much melanin. It can just be from the sun over time leading to that. So when we think about hyperpigmentation, it's important to think about if it's melasma or if it's um, lentigenes or lentigo, more than one lentigo, we call it lentigenes. And basically that's just a fancy name for a sunspot. You have to think about, are they sunspots or they're melasma? And I think we're going to get into that a little bit more, but mainly it's due to the sun, but there's also hormonal uh, causes as well if it's melasma. Yeah. Hyperpigmentation is really broad. Right. Like, like you said, just your melanocytes revving up, producing more melanin and any disruption in your skin can really cause your skin to form more melanin. It's almost like a defense mechanism. And we do see it more in darker skin. Mm -hmm. Right. And so the more melanated your skin is, the more prone it is to hyperpigmentation. And there's this question about freckles. You know, people always ask, what are freckles? Are freckles the same as sunspots? And I always say, freckles are really cute when you're younger, but sunspots are kind of what you get as you age, right? Essentially, they are the same if we were looking at them under, they're all considered lentigenes. It's when your skin produces, again, too much melanin, but in a specific pattern. But freckles are something we see in little kids. I always say as you get older, though, they're, it's it's called sun damage. <laughs> <laughs> so they do get darker in the summer. Have you seen the TikToks where people are like tattooing freckles on their face? I'm like, wait, I people pay me so much that. money to remove yes. sunspots and right. freckles. And here you are tattooing them. I know. I don't, I'm not a fan. <laughs> not a fan of tattooing no, freckles. No, no. I feel like they can scar. So yes, maybe definitely. just draw them on, you know? Yeah, I think or, it's cute when people draw them on. Yeah, I think it's yeah. cute. Or did you ever like, um, when you were younger, like if you had like a little blemish, would you like make a little totally. freckle out of it? I would use oh, eyeliner so and yes. make it yeah, like a little beauty mark. Like, like a little beauty Walmart. mark. And, yeah. You know, so freckles are, are cute. And, yeah. And moles are cute too. And so nothing to be, you know, concerned with in terms right. of cancer in a sense that they are just pigment. Because a lot of people think, well, can freckles turn cancerous? Are they cancerous? Mm -hmm. You really cancers or mel melanomas is when you have a tumor of melanocytes, which are the pigment producing cells and not the pigment itself. What about at home treatments? What are some of your favorite treatments for sun damage and um, hyperpigmentation? Do you have any? Yes. So um, I think it's important to look at the ingredients um, and see which ones are best for that person, individual in particular. So basically vitamin C serum can really help. So I really like that. As like acid can really help as well. And other than that, there's like alpha arbutin, kojic acid, glycolic acid, lactic acid, retinoids, mm -hmm. and then sunscreen to prevent. And then um, you have the Dermabrite pads, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I feel and like those are really Yeah, good. I use them because well, I have melasma. And the other day, my, my daughter was like, mom, you don't have melasma. Let me see. Let me see. And I'm like, I swear it's like right here. Mm -hmm. I've treated it because I'm constantly on, you know, skin preps. but I use the Dermabrite pads to prevent them from getting worse, but they do have a lot of the skin lighteners in them. So like you said, it's all about the ingredients and you don't want to overwhelm the skin because again, you don't want to cause irritation because that irritation then leads to more hyperpigmentation. But you want to pick, you know, a few ingredients that go well together, use them sparingly and not, you know, don't try to use everything together all at once. Do you like lasers from melasma? No, well, not initially. First, I like to get melasma under medical, you know, therapy. And we have guys, we have an entire two part episode on melasma. But I personally like to first get them on a regimen, a prescription regimen for at least four weeks, and then do a laser treatment. And usually my go to's are a low energy, low density halo or profractional laser. I also think microneedling works really well when we combine it, we have a full solution. We use a brightening solution mm. with microneedling in the office. And then the Pico laser also is great for melasma. Do you have any favorites? I think that my favorite is um, actually Fraxel if the skin type is appropriate for it, just mm. because it can treat like sun damage as well as just overall skin pigmentation. Yeah. But, um, but they have to be the appropriate skin type for that. Yeah, that's yeah. true. I mean, there's, there's a lot of different tools we mm -hmm. have, you know, lasers, and a lot of it depends on the settings and your skin type. I also like chemical peel. 
Yeah. You know, I feel like we don't talk about those as much because they're not like as fancy as the the lasers. But a good old chemical peel can work really well. Can do wonders. Yeah, definitely. For melasma. I like the ones that are either retinoid base or salicylic acid base. And then there's some really great glycolic acid preps too that work well for pigmentation. So next, let's get into necks because I feel like I get a lot of questions about necklines and loose skin on the neck and things that happen to the neck as we age. So tell us a little bit about like neck care. What's your um, thoughts on that? Don't forget the neck for yeah. sure. It's I think so important. We do forget it. We it gets forget. Neg- the neck yeah. gets neglected. The neck is neglected. <laughs> the neglected neck. The neglected, neglected neck. neck. We'll start a series. <laughs> <laughs> the ne- de- neglectic neck. Yeah. It's also a mouthful to say. So it's so important to bring your skincare down to your neck. So and that's chest. something. Yeah. And chest. And hands. And, and earlobes. And the whole body. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that what's important to know, though, is that the neck is so sensitive and the skin is thinner there, less sebaceous glands that we see on the face. So uh, it's more at risk of hyperpigmentation and irritation from topical treatments. So I would go very, very, very slowly. Like I see a lot of. People that they use retinoids on their neck, not using the sandwich method or anything like that, mm-hmm. and just putting it straight on, maybe not even any moisturizer after. Yeah. And then the next day, they're sending messages like, my neck is on Burning. fire. Oh, the, my favorite is when people also then spray perfume. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> right on the neck because perfume is fragrance and it's yeah. a major sensitizer. Right. And so they are priming their skin yeah. to really absorb that fragrance and, yes. and just bust out with the biggest reaction yeah, ever. Yeah, definitely. So if you are using retinoids on your neck, do not spray perfume on there. Yeah. And I would just start super slow and like one fourth of the retinoid and like three fourths moisturizer. Just like yeah. super, super slow. Yeah. And yeah. because like you said, the neck is thinner uh-huh. and it's more prone to sun damage right. too. Yeah. And we don't really think about putting sunscreen on our neck. Yeah. Like we do so our face. Uh, and actually the chest too. So don't forget to protect it like you do your face. Mm -hmm. So what are some common sun damage or aging conditions that that we see. I was just trying to think what like poikiloderma of savat is something I see we that a see lot. a lot yeah. in Southern California. And with poikiloderma of savat, it's interesting because it shows up all of a sudden. Mm-hmm. Like you hit your 40s or your 50s and you notice this discoloration on your right. neck. Yeah. And you're like trying to scrub it off. It's yeah. not coming off. You get redness because you get these little telangiectasias, these broken capillaries, you get pigmentation. And it's just like this discoloration that is so difficult to remove. Yeah. Right? And it happens in males and females. Mm-hmm. And I just had someone that they basically were saying that, why do I have this rash on my neck? It's not yeah, going it away. I have, like a yeah, rash, yeah. And they, it's so, not. Yeah. and they're like, it's not itchy and the cream is not helping. Like they try a cortisone over the counter and, that, and it's a really hard discussion. And it's like, you know, this actually is very hard to treat and it's from sun damage over your life. And then they're always like, well, I haven't been in the sun in the past <laughs> like month. And then why is it there? That's true. Yeah, so. They're like, I haven't been in the sun yeah. for like Six months, yeah, a year. You, you have to explain, guys. It's over a lifetime, right, of sun. So it all adds up. It catches up to you at some point. So exactly. the sooner you really start to protect your skin, the better off you're going to be, and less chances of de- developing conditions like this discoloration on the neck. I love to do laser treatments for that. Mm-hmm. It does take. I mean, I have to be honest. Sometimes it's like five or ten sessions of lasers mm-hmm. to really get it light. And I like to use the V-beam um, as well as the BBL or IPL laser that helps with the both the brown and the red. Yeah. Do you have any favorite treatments? I feel like IPL is like pretty good for Yeah, I, I agree. I, IPL both. is great. Yeah. Because it does both the red and the brown. Mm-hmm. Moving on to neck lines, because that's another common complaint, you know, I see in my practice is people come in and they really don't like these folds. And lines. I see it in like 20 year olds as well. Like yes. You see a lot uh, sooner. Oh, yes. That's a good point neck. because, well, for one is those lines are, are normal, right? I mean, right. my, my 15 year old daughter has it too. Yeah. So guys, for one thing is they've always been there. Now yeah. they can get a little deeper as you right. get older, but do you have a favorite treatment for that? So I think that it's important to notice if you're looking down a lot honestly that's true yeah i think a lot of it is the tech neck because i swear i see it more in younger people than 
I feel like I've noticed before. Mm -hmm. Not that I've been like in practice for like 20 years or anything like that. Basically, I feel like younger um, populations are getting it more because of that. Yes, because we're looking down like this all the time. All the time. But other than that, I do think like a gentle retinol on the neck can be really great to prevent and also to help treat. I think in low settings, microneedling can be really helpful to Mm -hmm. help stimulate collagen production and just like a vitamin C also as well. Yeah. Cause vitamin C is important for collagen production. Right. And I, I agree with all of that. Yeah. You know, I've been really loving threads okay. as well as hyper dilute uh, Kaha, which is um, hyper dilute radius. Mm-hmm. And I like to mix in a little bit of PRP and hyaluronic acid in with that when we treat the neck. But what happens is the collagen boosters, they get into the skin and they almost form like a little scaffold. Mm -hmm. And that allows your body to produce collagen and lie it down in the scaffold. So it helps firm the skin. We call those now biostimulators. But yeah, so that's those are some of my treatments that um, I find works well. But lately I've gotten these little these little stands, you know, that that you can set to the phones so it's up a little smart. bit higher yeah. <laughs> yeah it's not great for your back and your right. neck and all of that mm-hmm. we have the most amazing podcast community and we want to thank you for being such a loyal listener to thank you for being a fan of the show we want to extend 15 percent off exclusively to podcast listeners just use code summer 15 That's S-U-M-M-E-R-1-5. This is a special discount we're only giving to our podcast listeners to get 15% off your favorite products at AussieMDSkincare.com. Don't forget to tag me in your stories. I love to see you glow. So we did the neck. We are moving up to the eye area because eyes are something that we get a lot of questions about, whether it's wrinkles or dark circles uh, in terms of anti-aging. Tell us a little bit about eyelid skin versus skin elsewhere on the body. So the eyelid skin is really thin. And so I feel like it's more susceptible to sun damage and starts to show aging a lot sooner than other areas. It does. Yeah. You start to see the lines. Yeah. So I definitely think it's important to incorporate a retinol eye cream maybe in your 20s to prevent those lines from forming. And you have to be careful with that, though, because sensitive skin may not be able to tolerate it doing it every night so you have to kind of see like you don't want someone to have a lot of irritation on their eyes because that's worse yeah that can remember irritation can lead to pigmentation or discoloration so an irritation is basically inflammation for the skin and we all know how terrible inflammation is yeah so just be really cautious around the eyes i see a lot of people that come in and you know they have dark circles and they come in because they want to do eye glow or they want to do a filler you know around the eyes thinking that fillers treat all types of dark circles. But then I, you know, you start talking and and they are suffering from eczema mm-hmm. or allergies or you know, irritation around the eyes. And they don't realize that that is what's causing their discoloration in their dark circles. So what so, would make you consider doing under eye filler versus PRP versus... Botox or what's your step through? Yeah, in terms of evaluation, the evaluation is definitely so important. Right. And for you guys at home, fillers only help dark circles if there is hollowness. Because I see a lot of people come in, they've had tons of fillers around the eyes and they still come in, they're like, well, I have dark circles. And I have to say, look, it's the fillers that gave you dark circles because now you put so much filler under the eye, you can start to see the filler and it has this blue gray hue that called a Tyndall effect. So So, do you ever dissolve and then do PRP or? Yeah. So for me, PRP doesn't, it helps with skin quality. So it helps boost collagen and thicken the dermis which then doesn't allow the light to penetrate, you know, so you don't see the muscle under the skin as much. It helps in that respect with dark circles. Again, a lot of people think PRP is the same as filler, but that's not true. Fillers are still really useful to treat like the shadowing effect that happens from hollowness that causes dark circles. But if you don't have hollowness, filler is not going to help you. If anything, it's going to make your under eyes worse. I feel so bad. Have you seen the videos of Jennifer Aniston? Being oh, around no. With her? She has this like big bulge under her eyes. Oh, no, I haven't seen that. And, and you know, I feel so bad for these celebrities. You know, they, they get anything done and there's, God forbid, there's like swelling or yeah. or any sort of um, complication. You know, they're, they're, they're like always in the spotlight. In the spotlight. Yeah. And then they have to 
you know, listen to all these people commenting know, about so their uh, about yeah. their under eyes or whatnot. But I just use her as an example of right. where fillers can actually make dark circles worse. But so PRP for skin quality, Botox for relaxing the muscle that goes around the eyes. There's a circular muscle called orbicularis oculi. And so when it contracts, it causes the lines. And so you have to relax the muscle so it's not crinkling up your skin. And that helps with lines around the eyes. I think that that is the single best treatment you can do for lines. You know what I love is the under eye Botox. Like, I feel like it's not really? talked about as much. You don't like it? Well, it's great in some people, but yeah. in other people, it can make eye bags worse because oh. it relaxes the muscle. Right. And then the eye bags protrude more. Mm. So it can have the opposite effect, too. Okay. I personally don't think it does a whole lot, really? personally, but I think it can make the eyes open up a little yes. bit. But I don't think it really helps the under eye wrinkles, per se. Okay. I think under eye wrinkles are really mostly due to skin laxity, yeah. you know, and, and just thinning of the skin and so forth. So I think like resurfacing lasers, you mentioned retinol around the eyes, um, PRP. I think those are great treatments for that crepiness people get. Or the so I was going to ask you about lasers for under the eyes. Mm -hmm. Like what are your favorites? Well, in somebody who's, um, less melanated. I love the CO2 mm -hmm. because there's just nothing like it. I mean, we see that instant tightening of that skin underneath. For somebody who's a little bit darker skin, you know, more melanated, I like to do really light TCA peels, mm. like 15% TCA works really well. You have to do a series of them. I also like the profractional laser, which is the Irvium laser. It's the cooler cousin to the CO2 laser. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't use as much heat, which makes it safer for darker skin, but it does a nice job of smoothing that area. And you're doing eye shields when you do that. Absolutely. Yeah. And everybody always comments, well, why is it your patient wearing eye protection? They get so <laughs> mad, you know, go on this rampage. How irresponsible of you. But yes, oh, yeah. they have them. It's internal. So we have to put the eye shields inside. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like that's very, very important. Yes. Yes. Because you can damage too. the the cornea there. Mm -hmm. But something else is um, Exilus, which we oh, just yeah. did right before recording. Yeah. This that was so cool. I love that machine. Hi. <gasps> was training one of my staff and so I had her do Exilus eye treatment on me and so and you were there to yeah. witness that but uh, I love the radio frequency and ultrasound again it uses heat to tighten that skin around the eyes it's one of my favorite treatments that I like to do I like to do four sessions a year yeah and I mean there's literally no downtime there is no downtime like because look I did yeah, I, then I put my makeup on yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah it takes a little while you know with any of these treatments people expect to see results you know within like five days. And a lot of times they call, they're like, it's been a week and, you know, I don't see the tightening. I'm like, well, yeah, you're still a little bit swollen. It takes, you know, two to three months what to I really think, see results. Yeah. What I think was really unique about that procedure is I feel like most procedures, there is some downside, whether it be a too much pain mm -hmm. or downtime mm -hmm. or obviously expensive. So you always have to consider budget. But I think with that one, there was... No downtime. I would literally say no downtime. Yeah, no downtime. That's what's nice about it because it, it doesn't do yeah. anything to the surface of the skin. Right. It works beneath the skin surface. So Exilus Ultra 360, um, it's one of our favorite treatments in the office. We also use it on the body. Mm -hmm. Like I'm getting a little bit of laxity in my, in my not. stomach. <laughs> not at all. And so we also treated my stomach, but I like treating the body with it too. We do thighs, we do the glutes, we do the abdomen, like the under, you know, skin side of the arms. And you're exactly right. It's not painful. Mm -hmm. It's going to get a little hot. It's like a hot stone massage. Um, and there's really virtually no downtime. So, so a little tangent, um, but can you talk about Pronox? Like, what yes. is that? And <laughs> a lot of people get very surprised when I say dermatologists offer like a laughing gas in uh -huh. the office yeah. to help with procedures. And people yeah. are like, what? And you can drive home after? Yeah. What? And it's, it's just very like mind blowing for people. It is. It is. It's you're like, what is this miracle? I call it a breathable anesthetic. So it's oxygen okay. and nitrous oxide and it's on demand. So you inhale the gas and after a few breaths, you start to get this disassociative feeling. You're relaxed. It's like you've had, you know, a cocktail or so. And 
you're just very, very comfortable. The nice thing is because it's a gas, it leaves your system yeah. within really a few minutes. I mean, you can drive home within 10 to 15 minutes. It has no lingering effects. Mm-hmm. Whereas narcotics, you know, you, it stays in your system. There's that addictive component to it. You can leave you kind of groggy and you certainly cannot drive home if you have narcotics. But with Ponox, yeah, our patients literally wait, you know, 10 minutes and they're fine. It's like nothing yeah. was ever put into their body. So. The way I like to describe it is that you are kind of in this happy drunk state. And yeah. then you, it's not that you're not feeling the pain, but you're just kind of so distracted and you're just kind of in la la land. So yeah. you don't really realize what's happening. <laughs> yes. And not but, everybody yeah. laughs, but some people do laugh. You get very giggly. I know yeah. it's called laughing gas. It, we get all sorts of reactions, but everybody always feels so much more comfortable. I mean, I have patients that come in that do Botox and want to do Pronox really? and, oh, wow. you know, yeah. Um, whatever it's, whatever makes people feel comfortable because some people really have that anxiety for with procedures needles. Yeah. with needles and, you know, even with lasers, your eyes are closed because you've got the shields on. You don't know what to expect. You don't know when the next pulse of the laser is coming. And so it's just a way to make people feel comfortable. I have one patient who's like, don't tell me when you're about to inject. Don't, <laughs> don't tell me. And I'm like, okay, I'm so used to being like, all right, I'm about yeah, to inject. Yeah, exactly. Some people want to so know. Heads up. Yeah. But everybody's different. You Everyone's know? different. I feel like I'm just talking on <laughs> and on and on, which I tend to do, which is why the staff have this button back here. The Kentucky. Do you know what the Kentucky button? So you just press in. It says Kentucky, right? Yeah. But you know what it Kentucky. means? <laughs> it means stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because my staff, I have yeah. this habit where like somebody asks me a question and then I'll tell them the entire textbook version of yeah. it. I, just, I can just keep talking. But why would I want you to it. stop talking? Well, it's because so I feel like just keep talking. It's all just like so, so helpful. I just want to write so it now. <laughs> so now my staff says Kentucky when, you know. They just say that word. <laughs> yeah. So anyways. Really okay. The last thing we'll talk about are stretch marks. Okay. Because I saw a patient today. Actually, it was a male. Usually we see females with stretch marks. But this gentleman had lost a ton of weight and he came in, he had stretch marks like on his sides and on his abdomen. And they were older stretch marks, you know, like 10 years old. And so he was in wanting to know what he could do about them. Um, what are what are some of your favorite treatments for stretch marks? Or I should, let's start, let's talk about what stretch marks are. Stretch marks are basically when the skin is distended and there's just um, lines on the skin from that distension. So it can be from rapid growth spurt. It can be from topical steroid use. We see it sometimes. Mm -hmm. Um, And also it it can be from weight loss, weight gain, pregnancy. So it's basically just the skin stretched out. And so what's important to consider is at home treatments that you can do Often we go to all the things that stimulate collagen production, like retinoids at night, vitamin C during the day. And there's in-office procedures that you can do. Yeah, sure so they're very similar to scars. Right. Like you said. They're almost like tears in the skin. Mm-hmm. So we treat them in the office very similar to scars. The best treatment is to treat them early. Like yeah. When they first show up, that's when you really see the most improvement. Because once they've had time to settle and, you know, after so many years, it's then harder it's to treat. much harder. And yeah. I tell people, you know, maybe you're going to get 20% improvement, you know. The newer, the 25. better, right? Yeah, the newer, the better. And if they're in the early stages, we start with a laser called the V-beam. It's mm-hmm. one of my favorites when they're red. When they're red, And yeah. then we also can do resurfacing lasers to boost the collagen and help blend them into the mm-hmm. skin better. So I really like the profractional laser or the halo laser for stretch marks. In what about keloids, yeah. like with laser treatments? Do you often do that? So keloids, yes. Yeah, so we, we can do fractionated uh, resurfacing lasers with keloids, but really injections work mm-hmm. very well. We can also do something called um, laser-assisted drug delivery with scars, keloids, or even you know stretch marks, where we use a fractionated resurfacing uh, treatment or microneedling treatment, and then we can add topical medications, whether that would be like things like Kenalog, which helps break up scar tissue if it's too much scar tissue, or we can use Sculptra, which is a biostimulator. Like that works great for stretch marks that are thinner or scars that are thinner. It helps build collagen into that thinner scar or yeah. stretch marks. So there's definitely a lot of different, you know, techniques and, and everybody has sort of their their version or their recipe for that particular patient because mm-hmm. it also depends on where it is on the body, you know, that person's skin tight how thick or how thin, you know, the, the area is. Yeah. 
All right, so now we're going to move on to one of our favorite games, mm-hmm. Slay or Nay. Good. Uh, so freckle tattoos. <laughs> yeah, I was like, good. <laughs> <laughs> You're so cute. She's so cute. Oh, nice. <laughs> okay, okay, Slay or Nay, freckle tattoos. Nay. Nay. Okay, vitamin C for sunspot. Love. Yay. 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 Slay. Slay. Sorry, I thought it was yay. <laughs> Someone get Dr. Mina a coffee. She I'm needs alive, a, I swear. A shot of espresso. Espresso. <laughs> <laughs> I love that song. Okay. Okay, okay, I'm back. Caffeine Wait, did you see the I did you see the music video? Please, please, please. No, but I want to okay. see it. Okay, you have to watch it. You have to watch it. Wait, so do you know I'm about... I'm sorry, we are all over the place. This <laughs> Wait, podcast. this is important though. <laughs> do you know about Sabrina Carpenter and her boyfriend? No. Okay. I am so, in the dark. Tell me. Okay, so Sabrina Carpenter has a boyfriend, right? And the boyfriend is Barry um, Bio or something. I don't know how to say his last name. So Barry, right? So Barry is an actor. Mm-hmm. Did you watch Saltwater? No. I need to get out more. So- Salt water. Salt burn. Oh, thank salt God burn. you fixed me. Because I was like, wait, okay, so Barry is an actor uh-huh. and he was in a movie called Salt Burn. Okay. With Jacob Elordi. Uh huh. And the movie is like really crazy. There's like one scene in the movie that everyone's like, oh my God. You have to watch it. So okay, like, well, no one's talking watch about it. Okay. But basically, she's dating him, right? And so. Burn. No. Um. Barry, <laughs> Barry, Barry in salt. Barry burn. in the salt burn yes. movie. Oh my god, yeah. this is confusing. Wait, I need to take notes. Okay, so uh, <laughs> basically, she's dating Barry, right? Okay, and we all kind of knew they were dating, but we didn't know much about their relationship. Ooh. This has nothing to do with dermatology. Yeah, and this sorry. is so funny, this is but I get very excited about this. So basically, see, well, this is what we needed to start the podcast yeah. with. You're like. <laughs> Uh, I get excited about dermatology too. Path. No, I do. Right. I just think it's like really fun. The video. So okay, the so video just me. came out yeah. a couple days ago. So so there's Barry and then there is, who's the other Sabrina. guy? Sabrina. No. Oh yeah. So wait, wait, wait. So basically Where Saltburn. Where does the other guy come in? Oh no, the other guy doesn't come in. <laughs> oh. Okay, wait. So, okay. Well, no, I was just trying to say. With this other guy and I'm like waiting for the juicy details. <laughs> no, like, it's just that. Is like, she like. Leaving him for this other guy. Oh, no, no. Is There's Barry just... into this other guy? Like, what is going <laughs> on? <laughs> Let's just create random drama that doesn't exist. So, um, okay, no, we so... are not spreading rumors here, guys. No. This is just, I, I was just unsure why it was mentioned that he was in this. No, other no. Movie. I was just trying to, like, maybe tell you that maybe if you knew about this movie, because Jacob Elordi <laughs> said this. No, but I do know that I need to watch more movies and listen to more music. You know videos. Jacob Elordi, right? I'm so bad with names. The very, very tall. Somebody show me a picture. Tall of- Australian. Like, okay. So he's kind How of like a, you- he's a heartthrob. So well, he's, he's like what? a heartthrob. Is that the word? Yeah, heartthrob. <laughs> still say that, yeah. I guess, yeah. So that's why people like probably were very interested in this movie because they're like, oh my God, Jacob Elordi. And then you watch it and you're like, oh my God, this scene was crazy in this movie. But then Barry's a really great actor oh. in this movie. And then everyone so knows him from So is he in the this. music video? Yes, so that's what I was like, kind of oh. getting to. Yeah, that's Jacob Bellardi. Oh, yeah, I know who he is. Yes. I mean, I, I've seen his picture. You probably know Barry as well because he's a famous actor. There's a lot of TikToks right now that are even saying, Sabrina, I get Wait, it. that's Sabrina's boyfriend? Yeah. She should be dating the other guy. No, no, no. So in the music video. Oh, they make a cute couple. Yeah, they're really cute he's, together. He's very handsome. So long story short, the song, the song is called Please, Please, Please. And the song, oh. the video is like really hot. That is hot. <laughs> and basically he's a bad no, guy. No, no. And he's, he's like, a bad guy in, in the, the movie? In the music video. In the music video. And like um, basically, yeah, he's like oh. <laughs> shooting people. He looks good as a bad yeah, guy. Yeah, no, he looks good. In, and like he's like all like beaten up and she's like taking care of him. Aww. And it's funny because the words are like, please, like, don't oh, please, mess this please, up. Please, yes, yes. Yeah. And then also in the beginning of the video, there's some espresso playing. Um, so she's just tying it all in together. Anyways. Nice. I love it. I don't know how we talked about this, how we got I here at all. I don't know how slay or nay led to that entire discussion. <laughs> oh, because I said espresso? Because I said espresso? Oh, yes. <laughs> That's right. Okay, yeah. So okay. long story short, you have to watch um, the music video. Okay. <laughs> Back to slay or nay. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, please, let's get back to the dermatologist. Please, please, please. Oh, yeah, there you go. 
So DIY skincare for anti-aging. Nay. I don't like DIY stuff at home. Yeah. Like turmeric and stuff. I like I think taking turmeric is good. Yeah. It's helpful. Well, in our culture and the it's in a lot version, of our, we, yeah. we cook I mean, I always cook with turmeric. Always. Always. Every it stains everything, like does. all my cookware, but I love it. Yeah, we use it for everything. Yes. So using regular moisturizer on your eyes. I think that's okay. I don't think you need to necessarily buy an eye cream, but I am a huge fan of eye creams because I think that they offer ingredients in a very like more I don't know what you say concentrated way or just suitable, like more like yeah. yeah suitable way. That's probably like a way to yeah, say it. Yeah, I mean I I when people say you don't need an eye cream, I tend to disagree because there are certain conditions you know, around the eyes, like for dark circles, for example, we have an eye cream called Eye Glow PM that has arnica, vitamin K. So if you do get venous pooling, it addresses that. I love that. Eye and cream. then the retinol is much more gentle than like, let's say a retinol you would use for your skin on your face. Mm-hmm. Um, and then also like sunscreens. Yeah, mm-hmm. I feel like it's nice to have a sunscreen specifically for the eyelid skin because a lot of the sunscreens kind of burn when you put them on around the eyes so I hear that all the time a lot yeah. of people are telling me they're like it's a common comment that I get is like mm-hmm. what sunscreen won't burn my eye- around yes. my eyes and I think it's mainly just avoiding chemical sunscreens around the right. eyes like as well. mineral based SPFs yeah are better but yeah so I am with you I do think they they offer benefits for around the eyes but how do we get to this topic we're not going we're not doing a very I know um, slay we're or all over. Here. We okay to- we're gonna <laughs> To ourselves. She found the button and she is I love not afraid to use it. She's going to carry it with me. Okay. LED therapy for the neck. I think that it is fine. I'm not a huge LED therapy you know. person. Like the LED masks at home. I just feel like they're expensive and you can spend that money towards a cosmetic procedure, which has more benefits, mm-hmm. like more clinical benefits that you can actually see. But I'm not like completely against them, but I just, if someone were to ask me, I would say maybe consider an in-office procedure instead. Yeah, fair enough. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, I like them. I think as long as you're going to be consistently using them, the key is you got to use them like three times a week, 10 minutes at a time. Otherwise, you know, you're not going to see the benefit. So sleeping with an eye mask. Um, I well, we know your think, husband likes I it. I know. So my <laughs> husband loves the Ozzy MD night mask and he was on a bachelor party trip mm-hmm. and basically I got a photo sent of him wearing the Ozzy, Ozzy MD, MD like, mask. mask. Yeah, it was really cute. <laughs> so I, I think it's really fun. I think it's really nice, especially it'll just give you a deeper sleep. Yeah, because it blocks out light and you yeah. know that that could interfere with your circadian rhythm. For sure. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Mina, for joining us. Course, Stay tuned, so guys. We are going to do another episode. So, Dr. Mina, why don't you tell the audience where they can follow you, what platforms you're on and your handle? You could follow me on Instagram and TikTok and YouTube as dr.mina.md. Mm-hmm. And yeah, happy to see you guys there. <laughs> Comment if you watched. I want to know if you watched. And if you watched, please, please, please. <laughs> <laughs> I need everyone's opinion on it. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us. Don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe. And comment below. Let us know if you have seen Please, Please, Please and what your thoughts are. Bye. Bye.